Now, bringing you the very best in New Hampshire-based local music on IPMNation.com and 100.1 The Planet, this is Local Outbreak. Uh, these guys, uh, this is, they've been on the show many times, but this is their first time in the new studio. We have uh, 50% of the band Dead Harrison here with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello. We have Andre Dumont and Axel Bagley. Am I saying your last name correctly? Yes. I feel did. like we go through this every time. It is Bagley. Yes. Okay. It's like a bagel with a Lee. Right. Oh, that's a great, see, I wish I knew that. That's a great way to remember it. Nice. Or Bagley. <laughs> right. What? But but at least people remember it. Or, or vaguely, Andre. That's a that's good too. Yeah, bagels vaguely. are awesome. Yes, yes. Yeah, Jenny gets a bagel every Saturday morning. That's my special treat. Yes, we got it. We got Axel vaguely Facebook posts. Uh, I have noticed that. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, yes. It, <laughs> you know, I do keep it vague for a reason. <laughs> yes. Oh no. We're anyway, not, we're not going to talk about that on the air. But uh, how, you, that's how, the how, other how have you show. been? How have you guys been? Good. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah, it hasn't been too too long. I think the last we, time I, we it, were at the open house at the yes for at, uh, at, at uh, Terminus. Yes, with, uh, with MCC. That's yes, awesome yes. venue. Yes, yes. We do want to get to another show there. Our, our Saturdays have been hectic, but we would like to get to uh, when is the next show at Terminus? Is it June eighth? June eighth. Yep. And, and who's do you remember who's who's on it? More in the light. Yes. And Almost Honest. Okay. And you guys, too? Are you guys playing that one and as well? And we are playing yes. that one, too. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. Yes. And we should have physical copies of the CD in hand. Oh. Yes. Very good. Yeah, they're, they're coming in. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to play, actually, uh, what, what do you guys want to play? We, we've got a bunch of music. We did play one of them uh, at the end of the first hour. We played Monolith Lord, which is great. Uh, but uh, what should we play next? We'll play something, well, and then we'll come back and talk and get it, caught it, up. It's a nice summery feel out there. It is. The day is wonderful. The dead can be fun. So I say we go with beach zombies. Beach zombies. Very good. Do they have to wear sunscreen? Or are they, uh, d- does it not? That's, no, they don't need to. They, they don't, don't need, need to. And, and if you want to know, if you want to know, you have to listen to the song. Oh, is that addressed in the lyrics? <laughs> it actually is. Good. Oh, no, nice. <laughs> Stay tuned. Because that's important. All right, very good. All right, uh, check it out. Beach Zombies. This is uh, Dead Harrison.
Nice. That is Beach Zombies. The band is Dead Harrison, and we have uh, a couple of the guys from the band here with us, uh, Axel Bagley, and uh, I learned how to uh, the, a, a trick to say his name. And of course, Andre Dumont here with us live in studio. Yes. And uh, tell us about, now we were talking about it off air, but uh, tell us about the origins of that song, Beach Zombies. Oh, well, it was uh, like a little one-off show that, or it wasn't a, it was a one-off song that we were doing for a show that we had going on up in Rutland, Vermont, that was supposed to be just a beach theme party. Rutland, of course, known and, for their beaches. Yeah, you know, Rutland <laughs> has great beaches. Yes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and so it was thinking of the idea, and Jason, the bass player, just uh, he kind of ran with the idea of let's do a song that represents being on a beach yeah, and came up with beach zombies and brought the, some tasty licks. I, I think he challenged us actually to make a reggae song, but in a doom format. Yeah. Yeah, so to, exactly. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So like we ran through a lot of um, different type of reggae feels in just different swings and it just, it didn't hit until we just like, we, we locked in a like rock groove, that was kind of in kind of reggae, but it's a, it's out of his like wheel uh, wheelhouse. Yeah. So he wanted to challenge himself and us to like to make that type of a uh, um, idea. So yeah, and, and we did, and like the the response has been great. Yeah. Actually, I di- I didn't think that that song would have been, would have taken off like it did. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I like harder songs, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. like something catchy like that yeah. re- really makes you know people dance and you know, get involved and that's jason singing right that's yes. that's his yeah, that's jason, his lead vocal jason, uh yeah had to give him a shot at the mic and be like hey you know you wrote the song why don't you sing it right because it sounds good and it gives a different voice it shows the diversity of the band yeah yeah is that the first time he had done a lead vocal in dad harrison yes okay uh, i'm well yes. no, no 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 he's a, he has a couple oh there, he does okay there's uh a couple of the older tunes um I can't put them together in my head right now. I think but like, Death March was one of them, right? Yes, where we all had like individual parts. Like he had the whole first verse, and then I ended up taking like the bridgey part, and then my brother ended up taking up the last verse. Okay. And so, yeah, it was definitely like we know that we all can sing. Yeah. But it was another chance to kind of like showcase stuff. Yeah. Sean sings with me a lot, like, my brother, the guitar player. So yeah. it's like we have, um, that's where, and and, that, and with Jason singing also just gives like nice full vocal depth. Yeah, yeah. In the songs. Yeah, I noticed when we uh, when we came to the open house at Terminus, uh, when you guys did uh, Terror Grinder, I, I noticed yeah. you, you and Sean singing together. And I didn't, um, I, he's actually your brother? Yes, he is. All these years, I never knew that. Sa- I, same oven, different baker. Okay, understood. So that explains a different last name. I never knew that. And I don't think you guys look anything alike. But as you said, different baker. But uh, yeah, I had no I had no idea. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really cool thing. And just the origins of like, you know, oh, my brother, like I want to play some music together with him. And, you know, cause yeah. like, you know, you think Dimebag and Vinny. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. so there's... The Van there's, Halen brothers. Yeah. And it's like, there's definitely a cool aspect of like having family in your music wheelhouse and yeah, you kind of know each other. And plus your vocal timbers just like match so well. Yeah. You guys singing together on Terra grinder is really good. It, uh, you hearing that live. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, he, cool. he also screams too. Uh, yeah. He's, I, I can't scream like that. I'll oh, like, okay. But, but like <laughs> you, you, you put it together. It's very uh, harmonic. Uh, yeah. how they how they work together yeah because yeah. like uh the the influences if we want to run down with the influences too yeah yeah that um because you know isaac banks is gonna ask <laughs> as well as what's your favorite matchbox 20 so <laughs> i mean yes. <laughs> it, i mean it, to, to answer it, it would be um real world over uh back to good because like back to good's good but sure either, either which way <laughs> um what, uh, what are your uh, influences, Andre, for what you think the the sound of uh, pH is? 
the sound of, of what? Of DH. Sorry if my voice keeps coming in and out. Um, Like your side yeah, of the influence. I mean, I go a little bit more. I've always been just a huge fan of typo negative. Mm, but yeah. I like the, the good gothy kind of stuff. So, I mean, I like Sisters of Mercy. and But also, like, go into the realm of, like, you know, corrosion of conformity. And, mm. you know, different, like, aspects of rock. Yeah. And that big feel yeah yeah you know i guess that's the best way that i can put it i, li- I like things with a little bit of dynamics and emotion in them rather than just like right hard hit at you all the time yeah absolutely yeah well how about you axel mine's more of like the the grunge area yeah uh, slash prog so like alice in chains Soundgarden, melvin's yeah kind of like the same the same ones we went over before it, it, it's a uh, very like early 90s alternative like uh, 2000s Prague tool, sure. APC Pussifer, all that stuff. So like, I'm 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 a very like alternative type of person. So mm-hmm. there was a lot of uh, I, I think it was like, um, Caius, like when um when I when, when I was first getting into the band that like uh Sean one of Sean's uh, areas is, is Caius, mm-hmm. uh Queens of the Stone Age, and like I I, I rebirth like the stuff that i haven't listened to in a while like like corrosion and conformity yeah where i'm like oh yeah so it, it's been been a long time since i've like listened to like really grungy uh sludgy stuff yeah like, yeah so like it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like that desert doom stuff it's uh-huh very welcoming yeah <laughs> uh by the way isaac banks uh in the chat room uh so this is uh the question uh this time he's asking have you ever listened to the 80s band the outfield Songs like Your Love, All the Love in the World, I Don't Need Her, Every Time You Cry, and Winning It All from the movie of the Mighty Ducks soundtrack. Mm, I don't think I have. Your, your, your thoughts? <laughs> um, they don't particularly <laughs> ring a bell. I probably have heard one of the, the first one that was mentioned. I feel like I've probably heard it. Well, if everybody- I heard it, I would... Yeah, well, everybody knows that song, Your Love. I don't want, I just want to. Use it, your love. Yeah, yeah. And I, Fun oh, fact. Yes, yes. When yeah. I was a kid and I took guitar lessons, that's the first song I ever learned on the guitar. And that is a great song, actually. Yeah. You know, I don't mind yeah. it because you listen to it musically. Mm-hmm. It's got all those cool elements yes. to it. Yes. Well, the drums know, are so. wicked cool in that, in that yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. It is a great song. So. Absolutely. Uh, Melanie, who, by the way, is from Vermont, and I'm sure is quite familiar with the uh, the beaches of Rutland, uh, <laughs> says, uh, I do question the, uh, referring to the song, uh, Beach Zombies, I do question the use of sunscreen, though, uh, because, well, they're dead. Well, I, I've i always said, though, I, you're never too old to take uh, care of your skin. You know, you don't want, uh, you know, skin cancer, well, melanoma. Yeah. You know, I'm, and if it, you're a it, zombie, probably, it probably would help maintain a little bit of flesh still on you for a while rather than drying out and right crisping off and falling apart exactly exactly preserve what you have left exactly exactly yes I, i'm all about it she also said this is so fantastic everyone knows zombies love to make sand castles <laughs> <laughs> sometimes body castles if, if they try to <laughs> climb over a wall yes exactly, exactly. World, world, world world is yeah. World War Z freaked me the hell out back then because, like, up until that point, I was used to, like, 28 Days Later zombies. They're like ants. And I'm like, oh, man, that's kind of freaky. They're running. Yeah. These ones are, like, full-on sprinting and throwing themselves at walls at at Brad Pitt for, like, an hour and a half. And I'm like, I can't deal with this. If if this was real life, I would not make it. Right. No, no. (laughs) That's intense. Certainly not. Certainly not. Um, and, and, uh, tell us about, uh, because, uh, Andre, you had uh, commented on this off air about the, the album and, and kind of, um, exploring those different elements with people singing other than, you know, because you're, you're primarily the lead singer, but actually when I first met, met you guys before Axel was in the band, you were the, the singing drummer. You had a lot of, uh, lot going on there at once. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was like, you know, so many things in my head that I had to try and get out. So yeah, it was yeah. like, how, how do you do it? You just you just have to do it. And so it put me into that place to just create. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now with this album, it was a little bit different. It was more of like understanding that every band member has great talent. Yeah. And also has really good songwriting abilities. And so I kind of like took that little step back 
and let those guys like bring a lot of those ideas to the table. I mean, there was a couple of things that were like, I think, um, lyrically, my only input was like in the choruses of uh, Monolith Lord. Yeah. And there were just a cool set of lyrics that I had written, a little thing that I had written down in a notebook. But then when Sean brought the song to us to be like, hey, listen to this. I kind of made this song up and like, you know, he had some lyrics that, and I was just like, we can blend both of these together. And like, yeah. and that, and that's how the song ended up coming. And it was just like, also that weird connectiveness of the universe having multiple or a single idea, but it spreads across on multiple planes. Mm -hmm. And the fact that my brother was kind of like thinking of the same thing and at the, and the monoliths were popping up all over the place too. At yep. the time it was like that whole, we just discovered a monolith out here in you, this desert. You remember that? Oh, I do remember that. In, yeah. Like, in 2020, like there was like, like what, yeah. five, five that like ended up popping up. Yeah. Just randomly throughout the, like a good week. It was just like every other day, another one and another one. Was that ever solved? I forgot no, all about no. it. No, and it stopped for a while, and they just found another one recently. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, overseas. Ah, so weird. <laughs> was that was that difficult for you to kind of let go a little bit, or was it a relief, or you know, to, to let the other guys in on that process, or what was what was that like? I thought about it, and I mean, I could. It was a choice. Cause I could yeah. be disappointed with it mm. or I could look at it as like a relief, just not even to be a relief, but just let other people have a chance. Yeah. You know? And, and that's how I looked at it and was like, great things could come out of this. Right. You know, it's like, and, but that's also what creates that, uh, that interconnectivity mm -hmm. amongst all the members. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Cause we are, we're, we're all equal and in this together. So creating what is dead Harrison. Right. You know? So it's like, yeah, it, it's not just my show. So we're, we're well past the establishment of just the first starting and like, here's my ideas. And now we're into like a cohesive group. And so it's like really good to be able to showcase mm -hmm. what everybody, eventually he'll write a song. Yeah. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that, uh, thank you for that, for that, uh, that encouragement. Um, I got nothing lyrically in the brain. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, but I, I just hit things. <laughs> what, what he gave me, uh, a chance to do was to think outside of my own, uh, cohesive box of like what, what I, what I think, uh, drums should be or what mm -hmm. I think hard. Uh, metal should be yeah um i know i like keep jumping out away um like you you, you gave me the choice of like do you want to do this or you want to do that like do you do you want to just stay in this like rock and roll format or do you want to like learn something and like it it was a like the, the first year was was very <laughs> very hit or miss because like i play a certain way and he plays a certain way yeah you know what i mean like yeah not like he plays better or I play better. Like we just play two different styles. Right. You know what I mean, right. And it took us a while to figure out that like we were thinking the exact same thing, but like we were coming from two different, um, plain, plain fields. Mm -hmm. So like we, he, he gave me the, the, uh, the opportunity of like morphing of how I could make a, a fingerprint with this band instead of just like playing yeah. the same stuff. It's like, here's what I can do with this. So when you joined the band, did you did you try to learn exactly how Andre Absolutely. played the songs, and then, but over time that kind of morphed a little bit. Or? Well, that, that's a necessity, right? Like that's yeah. an absolute necessity. If you want a job, then you have to do what what the requirements are. Yeah, in the, the general aspect. So once you have that footing, then you can just muscle memory your own stuff as you go along. Yeah, and like there were other things I was doing. Um, like my own practices and my own projects in my own career <clears throat> that were teaching me to different stuff. Yeah. So like I would always learn and then come back, learn and then come back to, to hear, to make it better. Like I, I, no offense to myself, but I was trash the first like six months. Like you guys are very, very gracious 
because like I must have been like a timid leaf really? the first yeah. six months. Like I really was. Like, yeah. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> because, because you, Andre, you play a certain way that requires not like you want to. It requires like endurance. It requires a uh, technique yeah. and, and precision and like you you need to know certain things to do certain things yeah and i i offhand did not know how to do certain like thrash stuff or punk stuff yeah that he's like fluent fluent with yeah so like i learned a lot of old techniques that i should have learned in the first place oh okay and it's just it, it, not now now it's we all can, about that raw spirit and power yeah <laughs> Like he he just plays like in a raw emotion. Yeah, like, I, I <laughs> definitely puts me in my paces. So it's it's not like it's not like we, as I said, we we don't play on the same level. We just we have a very aggressive way of playing two different sure two different ways. Yeah, so, and, and, and even on stage we can we can swap out and I'll yeah. just, I'll just go up front with some percussion and he'll just jump on the drums. So it's, yeah. Do you ever do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've done that a couple of times. There was another thing that I was trying to do too, and it's nice if you have the stage, and that's bring two drum sets. Oh, yeah. And we've yeah. done that. And, yeah. and and do a couple songs with double drums. Is yeah. like People are just like, what is that? That's awesome. Yeah. And it sounds so big. Yeah. Is that hard? Uh, uh, you, I mean, you don't see it often. You know, once in a while, you'll see a dual drummer situation. It's easier. Is it? Yeah. It's way oh. easier. It, yeah. It's, it's not... No, when when you know the songs and you know the things, and yeah. as a drummer, you are learning to pay attention to the other instruments that are going on at the same time. But you know, having two drums can really like lock things in. Yeah, um, and it allows different stuff to happen too, because somebody can be carrying the regular rhythm and then the other drummer can go, Oh, I'm going to put in some little polyrhythms. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Mm. Does it, when you, when you do that, does it require one of you to kind of lay back and not, because you don't want to be doing fills at the same time, right? Or it's going to get messy yeah. or, or maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a drummer, I so mean, I but I'm fascinated by that dynamic. You know, I think it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, so I'm sure that there's times where it can be hit or miss, but yeah. I mean, when you're in the moment, it's just like a drumming circle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, except True. you have other instruments that are also going on that just help make that feel even that much. But I mean, at the same time, you know, you're already playing a song that you know. Right. So it's not like you may be making some stuff up, but you already have the gist of it that you're going to just glide right through it. Yeah. And, you both lock in and yeah. it just happens. And yeah. It's like super cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We should, uh, we should play another track. Uh, I, uh, what do you think? Uh, should we play uh terror grinder? I love, yeah. I love this song. I love here. I, I, I think terror grinder would be a great one. I th another, like, where does this Southerny gospel rock come from? <laughs> like, it's like, what is this? Well, what? Yeah, I was going to ask you about, uh, you know, if there's anything we should know about this before we play it, because, uh, you know, I'm I'm curious. Like I said, it's for me, it's one of my favorites that you guys have done. I uh, I, mean, I like, don't know. It just like it what was is just the way it happened? Like Sean brought the lyrics to the table and was just like, "Hey, I got this song," and he had some kind of cool riffs, and I was just like, "Oh, like I just had this spontaneous idea. Like let's make it this kind of feel." Yeah, and then switch it up into the chorus and. And that's what it became. And this it, it, and this is you guys singing together for the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. No, this is really good. It's a terror grinder. It's just it, it's a an entity that just grinds everything into the powdered dust, and it's just it, it's a terrored thing. Like it, it, you have to look at the uh, the album cover, what it actually looks like. It's menacing. It's yeah, just a beast that just grinds things. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's give this a spin. This is really good. This is Terror Grinder. This is Dead Harrison, and they are with us in studio. Check this out. Storm the gates of all the city. Lord, the chamber of your God. We stay. Yeah. 
That is Sarah Grinder. The band is Dead Harrison, and they are with us in studio. Half of the band is here. Uh, we, we've got uh, Axel Bagley and Andre Dumont here with us in the uh, in the studio. And uh, great track. You got to hear that live. If you have not seen uh, Dead Harrison, you should see them live. And uh, that that song is because uh, you guys opened with that at Terminus, and I uh, that for the open house. Oh right? yes, yeah. I really like. Do you always open with that one? That's a strong. No, no. not usually. It's, it's a strong opener. I think. It is a good strong opener. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just so happened that that same day we had band practice, so you probably just saw a, band, a bunch of rehearsals. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's it, right. I think to you be guys, honest, I think you guys even said that during your set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th- I think uh, Jason Skulls said something like, yeah, this is like you're, you're basically watching our bit, our rehearsal. Or something. <laughs> Welcome to our rehearsal. And it was, oh, it was good. It was really good, really good. Um, now, so the album is out, right? But only digitally, but you're going to have physical copies soon. Is that just a little just set back in the uh, duplication process? You know? Yeah, yeah. And where does the name None for All, that's the name of the album, where, do, where does that come from? Mm. Does that have any significance or? It does kind of, um, to me, it's a little, uh, a little nod to typo negative Mm. because in, uh, the lyrics of the dream is dead. There's a line that is all for one and none for all. Ah, and so the more I thought about it, I was like, how do I give this little nod? And we had the album before. It wasn't even an album before this. We had like six songs that we released that weren't, that were all singles that were put out yeah but i've always had it in my head that there's actually the two parts and so those first bunch of singles they never made it out to a cd they never made it out for like physical copies Mm -hmm. and they they're still not out there um but those are all for none okay and none for all is kind of like the part two ah gotcha so eventually there's going to be a double CD set that has oh. like those two things cohesively together plus some extra stuff on there. Oh, very cool. Very cool. It must be nice too being able to like uh, with, with Terminus being able to, to play there and to, uh, you know, because it's it's just, um, I, I tell everybody when we went to the open house, it was like, I think I probably said this to you, in fact, when we were talking, it's like walking into another world, walking into that mm-hmm. room. It's so cool. And you're walking into my world now. <laughs> and it's, such, it's such a surprise, you know. Um, who are some of the bands that you've had there? You've had a bunch of cool bands. Uh, Whalen Park just played there Whalen Park, yeah. last week, I believe. Yeah. Sun, I, lo- I love Sunset their sound. Sunset Electric. And, yep. uh, the, I know you had you had Conduit, right? We had Granite Conduit Tears. there. Granite Tears, yeah. Granite Tears. Tears were there before that. Uh, uh, already Dead, and then there was... When the deadbolt breaks. Oh yeah, yeah, from Connecticut, um, yeah, yeah. We, that's the thing is like just there's so many, so many good bands, and it's it's awesome to be able to like do some things that obviously being in the scene like how and watching the state of our venues just go away, mm-hmm. you know, and it, but it's trying to reinstill that element of like actually going to a place to enjoy music right you know nashua really needed that right absolutely it, it still at, does yeah yeah i was surprised uh at how you know because you know there's quite a few places to play around here but nashua yeah it was like uh, there's really not that many places to play mm-hmm. original music so it's it's wonderful to yeah. have that to have terminus yeah unless you're a cover band then you can go and well yeah of course yeah but if you're doing original music like you're doing now, that's that's great. Oh, we should mention too. Now, uh, so Terror Grinder was you recorded that with uh, Eric Sauter. Yes, at, yes. At Blackheart was the whole album done done there, or it was. It yes. was okay. Yeah, we had him on the show. I think it was a couple of months ago now, and his name comes up all the time. Of course, uh, Eric Sauter from Blackheart. He's a very busy man. Absolutely, absolutely. He's one of the best in the business. Yeah, hands down. At least in the New England sector, he is one of the most prolific if not like very uh masterful of his craft uh audio engineer and producer mm-hmm. yeah uh, at least out here yeah really very highly respected now did you worked with him uh before uh none for all or is this the first thing that dead harrison no, it was has the done first Black time Heart? working with him okay so um like the other stuff was you know the first album was done with my brother's friend who had just completed you know audio engineering school oh no kidding so 
we were his like first thing that he was just trying to do out of school. Yeah. So it was, you know, no cost or anything like yeah. that. It was just like, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. And we came up with an album. It sounds okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just ended up making more connections. I ended up playing, uh, filling in bass for another band, Hunter. And the drummer, Connor, is an excellent, has an excellent ear for recording. Yeah, we've had and them a so, long time ago. We have, we've had yeah. them on the show, yeah. Yeah, and now he's in No More Blues Tomorrow. That's his new project. Yep. Okay. Um, but he's got a great ear. Yeah. He recorded like four songs for us. And then our friend Joel Simkus from Tufts, uh, university radio station. Oh, he's uh, their audio engineer. Was that is that WMFO? Yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, and so he recorded another two songs, I believe. Okay. And those were the latest two singles before this one here. Yeah. yeah. Na so, uh, Nameless Dream being one of yeah. them, right? Yeah. Nameless Dream and I'm trying to think of what the <laughs> other <laughs> one was. I, I just I just blanked too. My my brain is just like. It'll uh, it's too much. Yeah, it'll it'll come to me. It'll eventually. come to you when you're not thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, um, that's one of them. Thirty minutes down the road, <laughs> when you started recording with Eric at Blackheart, was the intention to do a full album from the beginning? Or yes. okay, yeah. okay. We definitely like had the material at that point. And yeah, it was uh, um, good to also be able to like put that focused energy and really work on making something good and solid. I mean. There's there's a moments where you're just like, oh, I want to put this in, and I want to put this in, and I want to put this in, but it it's a long process. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just let's get it focused, let's get it done, and having somebody that kind of understands the music genre mm -hmm. that you're kind of in. When I like, what do you put us in as a genre? You can't really put us in as a genre. We're weird like that. Yeah. Like, we have a sound, but we're also a little bit everywhere right right you know um and, and so yeah just going into studio there was just let's focus and get it done and make something really cool and good yeah yeah how long ago did this come out digitally how long ago it hasn't been that long no right? it's it was released last month yeah oh, okay and we've so actually been done with the recording since last october October. okay it's just the process of it's the process of going through getting the right mixes getting and then mastering and then yeah you know and on top of that i was holding it off from the world for a little while while i was uh finishing up the artwork for the album oh okay yeah so, i want to look at because i have your uh I have your band camp page open yeah do you always do the artwork do you do, you do all the covers for dead harrison and all the do you do that all I yourself do, actually or? yeah now that i think about it yeah, no, it's really striking. You're like the main guy. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's it. They are their own things. Um, yeah. I was challenged a little bit this time, you know, because I had made some minor mistakes in the first album and, like, didn't know anything about rasterizing print and all this other stuff. So I ended up sending it off, and, like, in the CD, the print was kind of hard to read oh okay and things like that and so you know um but that was like 12 years ago yeah and then i was like starting to work on this um but also gaining a little bit more knowledge in how to do everything and at the same time honing my graphic designing skills a little bit because I, I like to do all of our flyers and stuff like mm -hmm. that too so yeah um yeah it was uh even my brother was like, hey, let's, you know, get an actual graphics person to put all the stuff together, get a, a designer together. And just like when you realize and understand the cost of this, <laughs> yeah. it's a different story. I'm like, trust me, brother, <laughs> I have this. Yeah. You know, I've, I've gained so much knowledge and like so. And even the um, when I submitted all the artwork for it to get duplicated, even the the guy over there was just like your art. That artwork is amazing. It's going to look so good in this album. Oh, that's cool. It's good to get that, that kind of validation, you know, because obviously he, you know, he probably doesn't say that to a lot of people, you know, that's really good. When you're putting out like 
hundreds of thousands of CDs over the course of your uh, yeah. career. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, we should, uh, I, I want to make sure we have time to get this last uh, track in, but uh, what should people know uh, about uh, Dead Harrison, how to find you guys online and what the next show is, is the show at Terminus in June. Is that the next show you have the next yes, live show? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, and that's at uh, 134 Haines Street in Nashua. It's our, uh, our, our little home base and we've decided to like kick it up a notch and start yeah. presenting other bands and other talent. And it's like, no, you come to see a show there. You're going to get a good show. Mm -hmm. You're going to get good sound. Yep. You're going to every, it just, the feedback from everybody has always just been amazing. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, so being a person that, you know, as a musician, I know what I kind of would like at a show and to mm -hmm. give those other musicians the same thing. Yeah. It makes such a huge difference and you get that energy and you get that feeling and emotion out of the music too. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Got dead Harrison.com. Dead Harrison.com. We have a website, yes. Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I don't usually use the instas and <laughs> stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're all out there online. You can easily search it in any search bar and it'll probably come up at this point. Yeah, you guys so, are you yeah. guys are very Googleable, as I like to say. Yep. Yes. Uh, the, uh, find the music, Spotify, YouTube, Deezer. iTunes, everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. With it everywhere. It's either Dead Harrison or Dead Harrison official. Yeah. Find us anywhere. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So we're gonna close with this track, uh, Hurricane Hell. Anything we should know about this? What is uh, a? I mean, is is this uh, expressing a concern about the upcoming hurricane? That was, that, no, that this is my brother going down on vacation down to Florida and being witness of what a hurricane did. Oh, down there. What what hurricane? Do you remember? I can't remember. I think it was it the after effects of sand, the after effects of either Sandy or Katrina. One, one of the it was it was a major one. Yeah, one of the major recent ones in the oh. past few years. Oh, okay. So, okay. And, yeah. There was like still that aftermath and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And he had went down there recently after it and like saw that and it kind of inspired him to write a song about it. Okay. So no, that makes sense. There, there's a Sean song. Yeah. Oh, excellent. And does he sing on this one too? Yep. So he wrote the lyrics and he sings this one. I sing this one, you but sing he it. also is like backup vo vocals. Like gotcha. another good one with some nice, harmonies in there yeah you know? yeah no you guys sound great when you sing together absolutely guys thank you again so much wonderful to see you both andre and thank axel you. thank oh, you matt always a, always a pleasure to have you guys on we're big fans as you know and uh we will close out with this this is hurricane hell and the band is dead harrison Their actions.
passions will seal their own fate.